are killing the family, showing off their incredible size, speed, power, and complex learning abilities. These behaviors keep our whales active and engaged. SeaWorld's Killer Whales have inspired generations all over the world, and we're excited to share their stories with all of you tonight. Killer whales are the ocean's top predator. They use cooperation and communication, not just size and strength, to take their place at the top of the ocean's food web. At the bottom are small animals, like krill. At the top, the apex predator, the killer whale. Killer whales are as big as a bus, faster than an Olympic swimmer. We spend days, weeks, months, years building relationships with our whales. This creates trust, and that allows us to do some amazing things. For example, when you visit the doctor, you present your arm to draw blood, or step on the scale to see how much you weigh. It's much the same with our whales. Tonight, you'll we'll see the whales moving together in unison. These synchronized behaviors strengthen social bonds and enable them to problem solve as a group. Working together as a team is what makes them the ocean's top predator. Scientifically, they're known as Orsinus orca, but more commonly they're referred to as killer whales. Here at SeaWorld, we like to call them Katina, Milani, Malia, Trula, and Makayo, our killer whale family. Makayo is the youngest at just 12 years old. And the oldest is Makayo's mother, Katina, who this year will be celebrating her 47th birthday. <laughs> Katina is also the matriarch or leader of the pod. Now, SeaWorld's animal training techniques create a language between us and the whales. It's a language of learning through positive reinforcement, encouragement, commitment, and care. Through these techniques and our relationships, the whales learn to trust us. And they even learn to take an active role in their very own health and well-being. Now, one of the very first husbandry or healthcare behaviors we train here is a position in which we would ask for a voluntary blood sample. The whales learn to roll ventrally or upside down and present their tail flukes. And you're going to see this demonstrated right here in the slide out. Now, not only does it give us a great view of the whale's entire body, but it also gives us access to key blood vessels that can easily be seen on the white undersides of those tail flukes. Our veterinarians will collect a blood sample at least once a month, and our whales are trained to remain calm and relaxed throughout the entire procedure. Now, you may notice us as trainers rubbing down or massaging the whales, whether it's on their back, their pectoral slippers, or even on those tail flukes. The whales have very sensitive skin, and this is just one way that we can reward them for remaining calm during procedures like this. But it's also a really cool way for us to be able to strengthen our relationships with them. But taking blood samples is just one important tool in ensuring the whale's overall health. Another important diagnostic is weighing the whale. Now, how do you weigh a killer whale? Well, we ask them to slide their bodies up and out of the water, but onto a giant killer whale size scale that we have located in one of our adjacent pools. Now, Nalani is going to demonstrate this in the slide out in just a second, and she is currently tipping the scale at about 5,300 pounds. You'll notice, though, that when Nalani slides up, the portion of her body from her dorsal fin to her tail flips, as you can see, is still in the water. Now, this area is called the peduncle. It is very muscular and very heavy, and it is the powerhouse of the killer whale. With the peduncle still in the water, we wouldn't be getting an accurate weight on the whole whale. So to solve that problem, we simply ask them to lift their tails up and out of the water. And just like this, training this posture enables us to ensure accuracy. So we know that our younger whales are growing properly and our older whales are maintaining a healthy weight. And the care isn't just physical. Mental stimulation and play are vital, and we surprise and engage with our whales at every opportunity. Play is how killer whales teach their young to hunt, and for the adults, play is important too. It seems that they just enjoy having fun. Making time for play is an important part of life for killer whales. 
stand for us. Hey everyone, I'm over on the left side of the stadium now, down by the glass. Did you know that killer whales love to play? In fact, they actually learn a lot by playing and through things called mimicry and observational learning. From a very young age, killer whales learn valuable life skills by playing games like follow the leader with their mothers and other whales. We're going to put that to the test today with Malia, my two new friends down here, and everybody at this side stand. You guys ready to have some fun? All right, right, let's go stand. Go ahead and stand up for me. We're going to be playing a game of killer whale follow the leader. Now, all of you and my two new friends are going to be the leaders, so on the count of three, we're going to spin around in a circle twice and then stop. All right, you guys ready? One, two, three, everybody spin. And stop because I think she's got it. Nicely done, you guys. You can all have a seat. Now, you may have noticed that Malia was paying very close attention to you. Killer whales are very curious animals and can often be seen sky hopping or jumping completely out of the water to get a better look around. Milani is going to demonstrate this with a big bow at stage, so let's give it up for Milani when we're here. All right, right side of the stadium, and it's your turn. Stand up for me. We have an even bigger behavior plan called a breach. My new friend John down here, did you learn the signal for a breach? Everybody, two fingers over your left shoulder. Ready? One, two, three. Get that signal. Nice job, John. All right, a very important part about being a killer whale trainer is make sure you keep your eye on the whales. Great job. Oh, you're amazing at this. Now, killer whales will breach for a number of reasons, whether it's to scratch an itch, to locate prey, get a better look around, but mostly just to show off.
unfortunately, overfishing, pollution, and other factors are having a serious impact on some killer whale populations. Killer whales are impressive animals. It's pretty obvious why they're the top predator in the ocean. That means killer whales are invincible, right? Oh. Killer whales depend on a plentiful food source and a clean environment. They're completely dominant, yet completely dependent. When it comes down to it, killer whales are not the most powerful animal in the ocean. Oh, <laughs> 